In this video, we are going to talk about how to find the principal argument of a complex number. Okay, so the first step which I recommend when finding the principal argument of a complex number is to draw the Agan diagram. So a typical Agan diagram should look like this. Okay, so this is the imaginary part of Z, then this is the real part of Z. Okay, so this is the positive at the positive points and the negative point of imaginary part, the negative points, then the positive points of the imaginary of the real part. Okay. So if you are to draw this on this diagram, for the real part we have negative one. Okay. So negative one stands say here. So this is negative one on the scale. And then for the imaginary part, the coefficient of the imaginary part is negative one. So negative one should stay around say here. So we'll pick the intersection point between those two, okay? And then we draw, we draw the intersection point, okay? So the angle that this makes with the x-axis is alpha, okay? So alpha should be found next when you are finding the principal argument. So to find alpha. Alpha is the tan inverse of the absolute value of the imaginary part of Z over the absolute value of the real part of Z. Okay, so from here, the tan inverse of the imaginary part of the real part of Z is minus 1. The coefficient of the imaginary part is minus 1. So we have the absolute value of minus 1. And then divided by the absolute value of minus 1 for the real part. So absolute value of a negative number is positive. And a positive number is also positive. So this is equal to tan inverse of 1 over 1. So the tan inverse of 1 over 1, we know is 1. So tan inverse of 1 is giving us 45 degrees okay so the next step so we know that the angle between here and here is 45 degrees so the next step is to find the principal argument now for every complex number the principal argument must satisfy this condition so you are seeing that minus pi has to be less than the principal argument okay so, and then principal argument has to be less than or equal to pi. So, in terms of degrees, this is minus 180. Has to be less than theta p. And then theta p has to be less than or equal to 180 degrees. So, if your, comp if your angle is not within this range, you cannot, it cannot be a principal argument. So, here, we can still reinterpret this as equal to theta p has to be greater than negative 180 or theta p or theta p has to be less than or equal to 180 degrees okay so from our argon diagram there are two ways we can measure theta p so we can measure theta p starting from here to the complex number or we can measure theta p starting from here to the complex number okay so the first tip i'm going to give you is to measure theta p you pick the option that's closer so you for this case you pick the option this option because it's closer to theta p than going all the way around okay so if you're measuring towards this side any angle you measure is in the negatives and if you're measuring towards this part, any angle you measure is in the positive. Okay, so from here to here, we know that theta p is, we know that from here to here is 180. Therefore, to get theta p, we know that since this angle is in the negatives, we know that negative 180 minus plus the 45 degrees okay so this is 45 degrees 
okay so negative 180 plus 45 degrees is negative 135 degrees 135 degrees to convert to radians we can say theta p equals to minus 135 degrees over 180 times pi so this ends up being theta p equal to minus 3 over 4 pi so let's take another example for you to understand better so say we have a complex number z equals to minus 1 plus i so first of all we'll draw our argument so our argument is our argon diagram so our argon diagram is this and then this is the positive part of the imaginary part then this is the positive part of the real part of z so our real part of z is in the negatives so minus 1 say is around here and then our imaginary part is in the positives so 1 is around here okay so this to so this point these are intersection points and then we have alpha here so next up we find the value of alpha so the value of alpha is equal to tan inverse of absolute value of minus 1 of 1 divided by the absolute value of minus 1 okay so a alpha is now equal to tan inverse of absolute value of 1 is still 1 divided by absolute value of minus 1 is still 1 which is equal to tan inverse of 1 so tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees okay so alpha in this case is 45 degrees now we have the option of picking the arguments from here to here and from here to here okay so to find the principal and from here to here of course so to find the principal argument the theta p we pick the one that is closer between these two options so remember if we are going from here to here we are counting in the negatives okay but here to here is in the positives okay so this is now equal to we know that from here to this straight line the angle from here to here is 180 including theta so to find this angle excluding theta we know that we have to say 180 minus 4 45 degrees so theta p equals to 180 minus 45 degrees is 135 degrees okay so if we wanted to convert this to radians it would be theta p equal to 18 135 divided by 180 pi so this is ultimately equals to 3 pi over 4 so let's take an example for you to understand better so say we have a complex number z equal to 1 minus 1 okay so z equal to minus 1 okay so to draw to find the principal argument of this complex number we will say we we'll draw the argon diagram okay so this is the imaginary part of z and then the real part sorry this is the real part of z so z equals minus 1 should that's the real part so it is around here now the imaginary part is equal to 0 so the complex number should be about this say like this okay so next up we find the value of alpha now the value that alpha makes with the x axis here is 0 degrees okay so to find our theta p if you remember i said theta p has to be within the range theta p has to be greater than minus 180 and then theta p has to be less than or equal to 180 degrees okay so in this case we know that we can find our theta p by using one of the two options 
so if you can go towards this part and towards this part but you pick the one that is shortest to your complex number okay so in this case both of them have the same length to our complex number but the second one they said theta p has to be greater than minus 180 degrees so if you start calculating from here to this point you have theta p to be equal to minus 180 and it does not satisfy this condition okay so this is out of the case so if you have a complex number that lies on this point of the complex number you have to pick the positive one okay so theta p in this case is equal to 180 degrees okay or theta p to radians is theta p equal to 180 degrees divided by 180 pi so 180 divided by 180 is 1 which is equal to pi okay so let's take another example for you to understand the concept better so let's say we have z equal to 1 plus i okay so we first draw our argon diagram so argon diagram is this okay so the imaginary part of z is here and the real part of z is here okay so the real part of z one should fall around here and then the imaginary part of z one should fall around here. the intersection point should be around here then we have our complex number okay so we need to find the value of alpha next okay so the value of alpha is one is one so the value of alpha as we stated before is the inverse of the imaginary part of z absolute value of the imaginary part of z by the absolute value of the real part of z okay so the alpha equals to the inverse of absolute value of one divided by absolute value of one so this turns out to be tan inverse of one which is ultimately equal to 45 degrees okay so alpha equals to 45 degrees okay so to find our theta p we need to start measuring from either here or here okay so the closest is from here to here okay from the positive side to this point so our theta p in this case is here to the complex number so our theta p in this case is equal to our alpha because unlike the other side we do not need to subtract 180 to get the angle from here to that part okay so theta p equals to 45 degrees or in terms of radiant theta p equals 45 over 180 times pi so we know that 45 goes into 1 and 4 so this is pi over 4 okay so to understand theta p we can just say in a quadrat in a four quadrat in four quadrats of imaginary real part in the first quadrat theta p is equal to alpha in the second quadrat theta p equals to 180 minus alpha in the third quadrat theta p equals to alpha minus 180 degrees okay and then in fourth quadrat theta p equals to minus alpha so in case of if you forgot how to do the other parts you can always remember these relationships between theta p and alpha so if you if you like the video leave a like button share with your friends and subscribe to the channel it helps thanks for watching this video